The Request, written by Arbor Winter Barrow. She'd been playing piano at the bar for almost six months now. Every night, a carnival of sounds and jingles and songs from almost two centuries of popular music. She was a musical quick study, had to be in this line of work, picking up whole new generations of songs in a night and ready to play the next day. On her console, she had an app called Music Mass that had whole discographies from every decade of music ready at the touch of a finger. The service was expensive, and she factored that into her service cost. Out on the dance floor at the mixology bar, awkward plays of courtship and friendship twirled around her. There was laughter, occasional applause, and conversation to lull in the background to song requests. Most nights, people requested the top 40 singles, and when she had been given this job, she had been told that's all people would request. But Avalon was a completionist. She started with the top 40 and worked her way back each night, ready for the day when some rando five drinks deep would request a song they'd heard on the radio when they were 10. It was her own professional satisfaction at stake, and nothing more. The piano bar was situated on a platform at the front of the room, the mixology bar, along the opposite wall. People could put their request in on a tablet in front of the piano, and they would pop up on her console. Few were a surprise, and fewer were ones that she didn't already know. A man in a blue velvet suit stood at the tablet, scratching at the stubble on his chin that was at least a week old. Avalon watched him out of the corner of her eye. Her fingers played across the keyboard of a piano that was probably three times as old as she was. The keys were well-tuned, well-cared for, and sounded as crisp as a newly minted grand piano. Oxidation had taken its toll on bits of the piano, but those were mostly cosmetic. It played beautifully. The man in the blue velvet suit tapped on the tablet, and she continued to play a jazz rendition of the latest hip-hop sensation. In the lineage of music, they were like a grandparent to a child. Even hip-hop was a parent to new styles. Her console lit up, and she glanced down at her wrist without stopping the play. Her face, usually caught in a beguiling mask, slipped into shock. Her playing fingers never stopped. She was not so rookie at this to let that happen. But she focused on the keys for once to allow her shock to drizzle away. Please play your favorite song. It was a simple request but one she hadn't thought to prepare for. Her favorite song? What was her favorite? She had consumed music for this job like it was a precious resource, but had never stopped to consider which was the most valuable to her. Avalon had three more songs on her roster before the request, and was simultaneously frightened and intrigued by the challenge. She eyed the man walking back to his table like he hadn't just thrown a bomb into her evening. He was sitting with friends, all of them wearing some version of a colorful velvet suit. The velvet suit trend was making its way through society, and she was glad to not have picked a profession that involved fashion. Too mercutial for her taste. Music, while complex, was understandable to her. It was math art, and science all rolled into one package. To pick one song to be her favorite felt juvenile. Like picking a favorite color. They were all beautiful, and a rainbow is not a rainbow without all the colors, just as a song was not a song without the history and lineage of all that came before. A simple, strange request should not cause this much controversy, but... She was torn. There were ideas, phrases, cues, hooks that she had held in high esteem, but none that rose above the rest. There were turnings, keys, and chords that spoke to her, but none that held the conversation. Avalon was one song away from the request before it hit her. All the things she liked, 
all the things she favored in songs and music and literal generations of soundscapes could be turned into something new. She had never fancied herself a composer. She was not a creator, but an executor of creation. But all the ingredients were there. She played through the last song before the request, while something formed in her chest. Her heart skipped a couple beats, and she almost lost the tune of the song she was playing. As the last song before the request came to an end, she caught a whiff of someone's perfume as they passed the piano deck. Sassafras. Avalon had spent a year as an aromatherapist, and each scent was tied to a dozen memories. But sassafras was unique to her. It was the smell of her mother's hair, the scent of dying leaves on a windowsill, the flavor of bread first thing in the morning. She soaked in the memories and pulled them into the musical ideas she had been forming in her fingers and chest. There was a marquee board above the piano that showed which song was currently playing, and she left it blank for this one. Memory and music like this didn't have a name yet. Her fingers ran across the keys, building increasingly complex phrases. If she wasn't careful, she would end up with a sprained finger. But caution thrown to the wind, she drew the composition forming from the ether in her mind. It was both complex and simple. The perfect song. Her favorite was everything and nothing at the same time. It was the memory of a beloved childhood. It was the navigation of lonely adulthood. It was the dissatisfaction with jobs too easily figured out and unchallenging. It was the journey through life, stepping up to where she was now. Avalon had no favorite song because she didn't know what song could possibly speak to her experience or where she was or had been. She related to a few people, and those she had were long gone. She would likely grow bored of the piano bar life in a few months and move on to something else, learning everything there was to learn in the span of a year, and then she would do it again, move from place to place, seeking something that had no name. The things she played began to collapse. There was no grand finish, but a trailing off, as if it was only the first line of a long story. Of course there was more to see, more to hear, more to experience. One song could not speak to everything. She let the last key hold until all of its vibrations were gone, and the bar was silent. There were no more requests listed on her console. Avalon looked up, expecting to see the carnival continuing on as it did. But there was no movement. No laughter. Conversation or calls for service. All eyes and ears were on her. The man in the blue velvet suit was the first to move. He stood up and began to clap, which cascaded around the bar until everyone was applauding. She didn't like being the center of attention, had picked jobs that made her invisible to the everyday populace, a statue of a feature of the background. But they clapped. They applauded for something that was hers, and hers alone. The job of a piano bar pianist was to be the background, but she had pushed herself into the foreground because of a simple yet strange request. She stood and bowed and waved her hand at the request tablet, asking silently for them to move on to other things, safer things. A line of people appeared and put in requests, and she was able to return to the thing that made her invisible. But she wasn't anymore. The eyes and ears were still turned in her direction, even though she had moved on. It was uncomfortable, but also carried with it the prospect of a new challenge. The name? Someone asked as she was packing up her bag at the end of the night. What? She turned and found the man in the blue velvet suit smiling at her. What was the name of your favorite song? Avalon considered for a moment and then shrugged. 
The beginning, I, I think. Does this mean there's a middle or an end? He asked coyly. <laughs> I guess we'll have to wait and see, won't we? She said with a grin and hopped off the piano deck. Your name, then. Avalon, she called back as she escaped out the door. Two months later, she was playing on a busy Saturday night when a request came through her console. Please play The Beginning by Avalon. She looked around the bar, careful not to lose her place in the song. She expected to see the man in the velvet suit, or whatever the fashion of the month was, but he wasn't there. She had a knack for faces, but he was nowhere to be seen. As she completed the other request, and more filled in behind the request for her song, she wondered about how this sea of faces, some regulars and most new, would take to hearing the song. She hadn't much cared for the first time because she was supposed to be invisible on the piano deck, but now it meant something. The song was imprinted on her mind, and the first notes came easy, and she wondered if she would get bored of telling her story through wordless music. Only time would tell if a strange request at a piano bar would offer longevity and vitality to her meandering existence. You've been listening to The Request, written by Arbor Winter Barrow, narrated by Rachel Craig.